Hello, everybody. I'm Mel Dore, the Aloha Shirt Psychic. It's Aloha Shirt Tuesday, and welcome to the Arthur and Mel show, or Mel and Arthur show, or both shows, depending on. So I've got Arthur in the house. <laughs> Yay. Well, you know what MAGA stands for? What Mel, Arthur. Greatly appreciated. <laughs> well, you got to put another letter on it. I'm sorry. I know, but still, it works. I like that. Uh, <laughs> um, and you know, if you go on my website, you'll find the uh, uh, a little, almost a mini uh, brochure on my website, and I have to thank Arthur for doing that. He did it, mm. for us and he's going to be at our Chicago event. We got Linda Grindle, me, Kevin Lewis, Kevin Chandler, Kim Copeland, Arthur, uh, Deanne, and Priscilla. Um, so it's going to be really, really neat. It's at the end of September, if you're interested, call my office, 847-590-5411. Might take us two or three days to get back to you, but we will, 847-590-5411. Or email me uh, on my website, www.meldorer.com. -E you can use those same things if you want to get a reading from me. Now, Arthur. If, yes. they want to get, if they want to get a hold of you, how do they do it? Well, I'm not walking with the sandwich sign on Rodeo. You can actually, it's just here at YouTube. You can find me at Arthur Ease Your Mind and then ArthurEaseYourMind.com. And if you want to call, the number is 310-494-5955. That's 310-494-5955. Arthur, A-R-T-H-U-R, Ease Your Mind. That's E-A-S-E, -E, your Y-O-U-R, mind, M-I-N-D, dot com. And um, everybody go to Arthur's channel and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And do the same thing below. Same for Mel. Same for uh, him. When I get to 23,000 subscribers, I'll give away three free half-hour sessions. And I'm going to start doing... Uh, shows a couple times a month for my members so if you if you subscribe that's one thing but if you want to be a member then you'll get some more perks and you'll get um, a discount on a session with me as well so yeah, i just started my membership it's I'm fun sorry. i'm sorry i just started memberships Period. yeah uh, one of the perks is i take everybody's name put them in an app and find out who's the winner and they get a free reading Yay, and I would suggest you all getting a reading from this gentleman because he's excellent. Um, I do have to say hello to Jeffrey Stein. This is uh, Oral Pharyngeal Cancer Awareness Month, and this is the the uh, maroon ribbon with uh, off-white on one side, maroon on the other. Um, and it says, no one fights alone. Uh, Jeff was just recently diagnosed with oral pharyngeal cancer. It's on the tongue. It's squamous cell carcinoma. Um, he spoke with Linda the other day. He called my office. Gary answered the phone. He spoke with Gary. And um, I spoke with him today um, for over an hour. What a mm. delightful, nice man. So everybody, please, 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 please send all of your healing energy to Jeff. And he tells me they, um, they can't see any cancer in the lymph nodes. Right. Depending on what the biopsies will show. He's going in for the surgery in May, and I'm not a doctor. I, I don't claim to be, but my feeling is he's going to pull through this with flying colors. Um, that they'll get all the cancer out, and um, his work is not done. So um, he's also an excellent healer. So everybody, please, please, please send healing energy to Jeffrey Stein. Uh, I'm sure that the support of the community will help him a lot. It certainly helped me tremendously when I was going through oral cancer. So Jeff, if you're watching, we love you, brother. Hang in there. Okay. So are we ready? Yeah, we have no choice. <laughs> well, we do. We can just talk. Well, let's go. Let's go for it. And then people will say, you didn't answer our questions. Before we, we don't like you. <laughs> Before we get to the questions, there are some things in the news that we should probably cover, right? Yeah. So, Arthur, I will let you start. Um, 
You said something that Linda Grendel had predicted yesterday, and it happened today. So I'll let you lead with that. Well, she has been predicting. She felt at one point the judge would tell the jurors to leave, the jury to leave, and then talk to Trump's lawyers while they were not present. And today, Humpty Dumpty tried to talk with one of the jurors directly, and they just like, leave everyone leave and they spoke to judges the judge spoke to trump's attorneys now he I, wanted to be part of the sidebar and he said no you're not part of the sidebar well he can be actually no uh, this, he just said i want to talk to the lawyers that was it and also trump i mean he's he's trying to play games you know the whole and I'll about talk to a juror and then th that juror is not dismissed he could say oh you know um you know what he's trying to do is create a hung jury. Well, he's he's intimidating. Well, actually, what the judge told them was basically, you're not going to intimidate jurors. Right. It's pure intimidation. It's not going to work. When when you say he tried to talk to a juror, did they say how? Yeah. She was like, 12 feet away. And, you know, apparently he didn't like one of her questions. And he, he, started, he tried talking to her directly, like, while she was sitting there, he tried to talk to her. And they said, stop. Did he? Did she respond? No, he was. He was. Everyone would just stopped him be, right before he started talking to her. Just well, he's going to learn this. This judge is not going to put up with nonsense. Judge Marshawn, I, I, it's yeah. not going to happen. He's, you know, he's going to be totally no nonsense. You know, so we can, you know, I, I laugh because um, Trump was calling Joe Biden Sleepy Joe and oh yeah, and then he's sleeping. His, questioning uh joe biden's um uh is he senile or whatever Cognitive. and and look at trump he falls asleep in court well because he's up all night you know texting on to social well he's gonna be held in contempt i'm telling you well they uh alan bragg put that in today he wanted to hold in contempt they can only charge him like a thousand dollars for each well but i watched glenn kirshner glenn kirshner put him in jail well, the judge first, Glenn Kirshner said, normally what happens, the judge will say, don't do it. Then if they do it a second time, it's a $1,000 fine per occurrence. Then a third time, the judge will say, okay, we've asked you not to do this. We find you. Now we're going to send you to jail. Now, a lot of people right. are asking in the questions, well, because he's got Secret Service protection and what if... Oh, we can't send them to jail, blah, blah, blah. The judge is going to say, oh, yes, I can. And However, Trump wants to be sent to jail so he can use it as a... Uh, you know, yes, he does. Look what they're doing to me. Send me money. However, I think that the judge would put him under house arrest under a tether, restrict him from talking to social media about this case in any way, shape, or form, which the judge mm -hmm. has the right to do. And it's not violation of Trump's free speech, which Trump would appeal on that, but he wouldn't win. What Trump is trying to do is create a hung jury, because if they get a hung jury, he doesn't walk free. He gets an, it means he, he has to have another trial. Right. Or if it's a mistrial, then he doesn't get to walk away free. So but he will not succeed. Mm -hmm. you know, I heard one of the commentators on MSNBC saying that. You know, Trump probably fell asleep in court. It's got to be torture for him sitting through this, not because of what they're saying about him or anything like that, but he's got nobody in that courtroom that he can bully. He's got nobody in that courtroom that he can kind of talk to with his rhetoric and get on his side. He just got to sit there and listen and not do much of anything. And it's got to be torture for him. <laughs> right. But also yesterday after, you know, when he made his little speech, complaining oh they won't let me see my my go to my son's graduation and and they won't let me go to the supreme court hearing it's like well you know what you're indicted criminal defendant so come on well somebody said and i and i agree he should have thought about that before he was creating a cover-up you know there's an old saying sometimes the crime doesn't get you but the cover-up cover does. does and you know, if you know the other stuff was a misdemeanor, now it's felony because he tried to cover it up. Right. At some point, you know, they were also saying, "Well, I think it was Lawrence O'Donnell. Once he's out of the courtroom, then he can use that for a campaign. Look at what they're doing to me." But at some point, he's going to talk really crap about the judge, 
and the drawers and oh, the system's unfair. Blah, blah. You already did yesterday. No, but that's but that was a violation of the gag order, and he's going to do it again. So what the judge is going to do is hold him in contempt, but also at some point, the judge is going to order cameras out of the courthouse completely. That'd be interesting. Yeah, just hit me, and the judge has the right to do that. Yeah, so I'll be doing it on the steps outside. So if he wants to go to jail, he'll be under. Well, it will be in a cell where nobody can get to him and he wouldn't have any access to saying anything to the outside world. But I see him under house arrest. He'll still be able to have his McDonald's and Diet Coke. Right. So that's what I see. Yeah. What do you I see? Just, I don't see him getting away with what he thinks he's going to get away with. Thank you. Okay. We've got a lot of juicy stuff today. Sleep, you know, okay, House Speaker Johnson yes, uh, faces uh, MAGA revolt because he wants to do, you know, three different bills for one of them aid for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And Marjorie Taylor Greene, she got one supporter to try to oust Mike Johnson. And that's Thomas Massey, Massey who's a Republican from Kentucky. But I see Marjorie Taylor Greene at some point and voted out. I see her under investigation. And Massey, I see him voted out in Kentucky. So good. Well, um, I see Marjorie Taylor Greene. I mean, I don't forget. I still feel Johnson's going to be gone. You know, but, I feel originally I felt May. But I still see aid for Ukraine going through itself. Oh, that's still happening. Yes, it is. And I also feel that he, they may pull back on some of the aid to Israel. True. But, you know, Biden doesn't want it. He might be told that part unless they put it in with aid for Ukraine. So we'll then see what happens. But I, I do feel. Go ahead. You, Zelensky was saying they're running out of missiles and they're running out of stuff. So I do feel that though it will be replenished. I see them getting the equipment they need mm -hmm. like that war. Mm -hmm. um, and Johnson has already said that. Uh, he was going to support Trump for president. And then he talked to Trump and Trump gave a nod to giving uh, aid to Ukraine. But all Trump's got to do is make a phone call to somebody else and say, if he does it, get rid of him. And Trump would do that in a nanosecond. Oh, please. But, you know, the fact that they had that thing down in Mar-a-Lago with, with Johnson, you know, trying to put, say, oh, yo, illegals can't vote. You know, the Democrats slightly leave. It's against the law. I mean, you know, it's like. And what about, um, well, they're talking about seizing funds, Russian funds and U.S. banks to fund Ukraine. I see that happening. I think it's brilliant. I, I do, too. But um, but actually, Johnson did stand up. I don't like him. I don't like his politics. I think he's a little dubious. He, no, he's very dubious. But he pushed back against um, the Republican anger uh, when he proposed, with, you know, for the supporting Ukraine for, I mean, aid for Ukraine. Because he knows the Democrats will stand behind him if he does that. Well, he said he was a wartime House Speaker. I mean, wartime House Speaker. What's he talking about? But he gives, he thinks way too highly of himself. <laughs> well, don't forget he equates himself to Moses. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, tell me. I didn't hear about that. I got to hear about that one. Tell me about Oh, no. It. He said, you know, he felt he was anointed to become the Speaker of the House like Moses. Oh, <laughs> and when I heard that, I said, yeah, and I know where the uh, the golden calf is. It's in the bathroom up in, uh, in Trump Towers. Outside the golden toilet. Yeah, it's molded into that. And he, say, he, but, um, he said he'll press forward with, uh, uh, with U.S. National Security Aid Package, mm -hmm. um, which will force him to reply to rely on Democrats to help him pass it. Exactly. Um, so if the Democrats are smart, they'll work with them to get it passed. And that'll actually be a feather in Biden's cap. <laughs> yes. Because then it becomes, you know, both sides, not just one sided. Well, he's, you know, it's it, it said in the article I read that um, that he'd have to rely on Democrats to help him pass it. Uh, because of obstruction from his weakened majority, those were the exact words. Yeah. Uh, uh, I pick up he'll barely get the votes, but he'll get it. Yeah, and he gets so. I don't know if Marjorie Trailer Green tries to oust him. She's only got one person. I don't know. I've always seen him gone, but not because of her. 
<laughs> I thought it was other reasons. Other reasons. I mean, I think she's part of it, but not the full just because of her. Um, the other thing is um, with Clarence Thomas, he didn't show up. No show. Yeah. Court. So people are wondering what's going on. What do you think? What do you intuit? He was canceling his yacht privileges. <laughs> I can't make it this weekend. Sorry. Um, I don't know. I, I felt that it was like, I don't feel he was sick. I, I, I It was just a no-show. I just felt he didn't feel like going in. That's how I was reading it. And there's a reason it'll come out in probably two months. Well, see, here's where we can respectfully agree to disagree because I see dark clouds all around him. And typically when I see that, that's an illness. There's okay. Or there's something he's trying to hide. Uh, and I keep seeing him gone. I mean, I got a bad... Well, I, I predicted two years ago he'd be gone October. I thought it would be last October. I feel it's this October. It may be because of health reasons, quote unquote, but a lot of it has to do with his wife. Okay, but I felt something's going on. It's either with him or with her. But... Uh, I'm still questioning his health, but anyway. All righty. Well, that can uh, be considered mental. <laughs> very well could be. Israelis are opposing the uh, the airstrike on Iran, mm -hmm. uh, counter airstrike on Iran. So Netanyahu's not looking too popular. I see many, many people in Israel in Israel um uh, marching uh to oust Netanyahu. <laughs> I've always felt by June, July he's gone. And I just want to say one thing. When I talk, sometimes people, oh, there, it's your opinion. It's not my opinion. It's what my guides are giving us. A lot of times when we do this, it looks like we're just talking and giving our opinions. But we make it seem that way, but really it's coming from our guides. And mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because I really have to be more clear in saying, my guides show me. I intuit. Right. Or like when I say I feel, it's like it's not just I feel. It's It's coming from... When I say I feel, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is I see, I intuit. It's a psychic message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was talking to I was talking to a client yesterday and she said, Well, that might be your opinion. I said, It's not my opinion. It's like, you're calling me for reading. I'm giving you what they're giving me. She said, Oh, I thought I didn't realize you were, you know, giving from upstairs people, or whatever you want to call it. I said, yeah. That with me because when I do my readings, I do it just like we're doing it now. And I yeah. had the other day is, is this psychic or just because you have a lot of knowledge? I said, well, I love to learn, but it is my psychic stuff. Everything in my office is what we're doing right now, other than talking about this sidebar, right? <laughs> psychic. All right. So we've got questions. Are we ready to get started? Go for it. All righty. So the first one was Rose Blue who says, hi, you all again. Um, has this New York criminal trial triggered a divorce clause among Melania's prenup agreements? I will say no to that. In fact, she's saying now that, I forget what she says, but it came out about something with her supporting him for presidential candidate or something. I don't know, so. <laughs> well, when she was asked, are you going to do more campaign stuff? She said, stay tuned. Right. But I'll be honest with you. I have felt ever since they were in the White House, there was a file. There's a divorce papers already written up. They just have to be signed. Well, I'm sure there's a huge prenup, and I'm sure that she's been kind of... Well, don't forget, she she fought to get more money last, last time. Correct. Coached on what to do. So mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay, go ahead with yours. Um, I have one from... Veronica, interesting. All this chaos is draining. Get in line, pick a number. Will we finally have peace entering 2025 once the election is done with? Well, I still think there will be some shenanigans after the election. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to say this is going to go away tomorrow at 2.30, but it's not. You know, I I think, and please, everybody don't, fall off the chair. I think this is going to go on for about another year and a half to two years. Oh, it, That's it's what not I... going to go away, like you said, overnight, but I do feel we can start taking a sigh of relief because we won't have people like Bill Barr 
you know, rearranging things for Trump? Well, now I'm going to play the devil's advocate and say, okay, most of us thought we had that sigh of relief when Biden was elected, but we're still talking about the Donald Trump BS. Uh, and, you know, whoever asked that question, that was a really good question. I right. think, unfortunately, it's going to be, you know, around for a couple more years. And then I see things coming back to more to center. I mean, center, center. Yeah, well, I, it's going to take about 2026 for things to settle. But it's but I do feel I mean, to me, it's always been like the monster movie where the monster dies and all of a sudden you think it's dead and then it shows up again. Oh, that's a good that's a good analogy. So it's like. So when somebody said, what happens when Trump dies? They said, somebody cut off the head. <laughs> they grow another one. Call, call, call Dr. Van Helsing, please. <laughs> Dr. Van Helsing is the guy who fought Dracula, for those of you. Who exactly. <laughs> Vampire Slayer. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that was a good question. This is a personal question. Okay. Judith Tomasco says, hello, Mel and Arthur. Um, Arthur. I have a hard time between saying author and Arthur. Okay. Think, think Uncle Arthur. I do. Which, I think writing and I got to stop. I have Arthur, a Arthur. Because it's part of my hearing. Uh, Arthur and author. Yeah. Hard to say Arthur or author. I have to think. Okay. Arthur is an author of a book. <laughs> Don't even, please. Better uh, Arthur is a writer. <laughs> okay. Be an author, an author. Hmm. But it's, I can't say it. It's too hard in one sentence. So Arthur is a writer. Okay. All right. Speaking of writing, this question, this is a good one. Hello, Mel and Arthur. Love your show. Thank you. I have suffered a devastating loss. I went to visit my daughter this past weekend. A sister was supposed to watch our dogs, Ozzy and Ivy. Unfortunately, somehow Ozzy is missing. I have been looking for him since I got home. His sister, Ivy, is devastated. She won't eat, and she won't even take her favorite treat. Please, will Ozzy be found and come home to us? I'm beside myself worrying. Thank you, Julie. What do you think? What do you see? What do you intuit? Ozzy shows up. Ozzy's not gone. That's what I, I feel. Ozzy was found. Someone's taking care of Ozzy, and they'll come forward with Ozzy. I don't feel he's he's gone. I got the same thing that Oz that Ozzy will return home, and um, I don't know if they said the dog got out or whatever. But thank goodness I don't see Ozzy hit by a car, but um, I see a, a reunion. Yeah. All right. I get two. Okay, go ahead. Your turn. Some of this we've already answered. Um, Pam Ferdo, do you see the jury seating being filled? Uh, the, apparently, this was written yes. Today there were none. Well, now there's seven. So. Now there's seven. So they're gonna they're gonna have a jury. I promise. With I I would say with almost within a week. I do think one juror is going to be dismissed, so they'll have to put an alternate one in there because some shenanigans and Trump will pull. But even, I think they have 12 or 13 jurors and then six alternates. Five so, six alternates they can put. So the yeah. alternates also have to sit in the courtroom and hear everything in case one... I've been an alternate. It's not fun. I know. I'd be nodding off. Uh, but the, are they? do they allow you to take notes in the courtroom? Because I'd be like writing things like... Oh, yes. But you're allowed, you're allowed to take notes, but you have to leave your notebook and pen on your seat. Oh, you I would do that. That wouldn't be a problem. You can't take it home with you. But then when you take go to the jury room, you take it with you. Oh, I'd be like, I'd have an encyclical written. But nobody can read my handwriting because I do I'd be it. playing hangman. <laughs> no, I do it with abbreviations. Nobody can read. <laughs> in case they tried, they'd be like, what is this? Okay. All right. Crazy yes. Shark. I like that name. Yes. Crazy shark. Hi, Arthur and Mel. I'm just going to say A&M. It's easier. Um, I was recently passed over a promotion that was, given, that was given to an external hire white male with, less, with a less impressive resume. Uh, white males seem to dominate my industry. Well, they seem to dominate this country right now, but... Um, 
they seem to dominate my industry um, while it's an uphill battle for minorities. Do you ever see that dynamic ch changing? Yes, I do see that dynamic changing. That, um, you know, I see affirmative action coming back, even though the Supreme Court's overturned affirmative action, I see it coming back. And I see uh, a time when equal rights for women where they're going to be able to get paid the same amount as men. It sounds to me, though, like Crazy Shark, that this was more political. I, I that's that's the in the company, That there's somebody politics. in the company that knew this person and they wanted this person in. And so... Nepotism, political, is what I'm getting. Correct. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think it was discrimination or reverse discrimination. I think it was more political. It still doesn't make right. No. Don't quit, Crazy Shark. Because sometimes when we want something and we don't get it, like a job promotion, there's something better. better. And I'm getting something, a career opportunity showing up for her in August, September. That's what I see, something better coming along that you'll get. You'll look back and think, eh. Thank God I didn't take that. Right. And by the way, the person they put in that position is not going to last very long. No, no. All right. No. The your, turn. Of your turn, A. <laughs> Thanks, M. Uh, <laughs> M and A, Ma, A and M. I don't know. Kimberly Konos, Donald Trump may have been drugged to attend his own trial. <laughs> Got a lot of thoughts about that. I don't think so. No. I just think he was up all night. I think the man actually sunsets sometimes. We don't realize it. He looks terrible. I mean, I'm really nervous about his health. Uh, I mean, those those pre-trial stuff can get pretty boring. And I'm yeah, not well, saying, but right. it's when the first day of your own trial. Oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm I'm all on your side, but um, I mean I watched Glenn Kirshner now and then. He was saying, I think it was yesterday, where he mentioned that, you know, doing what he does, he said when they hammer during in, witnesses or potential people that are guilty, and they leave the room for like 10 minutes. The person that like will fall asleep or whatever, it's usually guilty. It's the ones that are all hyper that are not. So, so everybody so. Um, watch Glenn Kirshner when you get nervous. He's incredible. And uh, he's also with Brian Taylor Cohen a lot too. Yes. I I shared something on my on my community page with Brian Taylor, Taylor Cohen or whatever. Mm -hmm. They have a show together now, but everybody watch that because I mean, if you have any legal questions, you'll look at that. I don't think he was drugged. I don't. No, I, I, like I said, I think the man sunsets. I think he was tired. He was up all night, you know, and then at three o'clock, putting stuff on social, his social media, true social, which the stock is going down about $3 billion. Well, he knew that. I mean, when he did, when he said he's raising all that money, yeah. it's going to tank. And I mean, so is Twitter or X or whatever it's called nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but I see that the 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 judge is going to say that he's not going to be allowed to post anything on any social media about this trial, period. Mm -hmm. And if he does, contempt, other than to say, I'm on trial. Yeah. Wee. Well, you got that right. <laughs> okay. Beth Hunt says... Hi, Beth. Hi, Arthur and Mel. a and I live in Missouri, and the legislature here is trying to make it harder for citizens to get initiative on the ballot. They mm -hmm. have lost two big ones lately, one overturning the right to work law they passed, overturned their vote against Medicaid expression, expansion, I'm sorry, and now abortion will most likely be on the ballot in the fall. They are trying to raise the current thresholds for the populace to put these on the ballot. Will they be successful? And will Missouri begin to go back to being purple it was, as it was a bellwether state for many years until recently? Well, you know, it's funny that some of the MAGA Republicans, the MAGAs, when they don't get what they want when the voters speak, they'll try to find some other nuances to suppress what the people really want and to push forward the MAGA's agenda. I see Missouri purple and I see that there's some kind of loophole in the state where these people that are putting these initiatives on the ballot and they'll win, uh, 
you know, and if, if the mangas try to um, snark their way around it and pull some other BS, they're not, they're, it's going to be called out and the mangas aren't going to win. That's what I pick up. <laughs> Do you remember the Three Stooges when they light the cigar and it would blow up in their face? That's right. That's all I'm going to say. Right. I mean, um, I mean, if she's asking, like, the initiatives have been passed and then they don't want to do anything about it. And so now what they're trying to do is raise the ante to keep right. things from going on the ballot. I don't think they'll succeed in that. For a while, it might look like they will, but they will not. And then enough and, people will come out to get the stuff on the ballot anyway. In the long run, they lose, is what I'm going to say. Like okay. I said, it may look like they're winning, but in the long run, even if they were to win a little thing, it's just the battle. It's not the war. It reminds me of when uh, Kasich of Ohio tried to ramrod some things through, and he, in order to get something on the ballot to stop it, he only needed X amount of signatures, and they had truckloads. They had, like, oof, I think millions of signatures, and he 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 learned a lesson on that. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, the politicians in Missouri, they can be voted out and they will. Yes. I see the initiatives on the ballot. They'll try to just get like, um, to try, like I said, to raise the ante to get the initiative on the ballot. And some BS, oh, you didn't get it in on time or, you know, you have to have more, uh, you have to have more signatures, whatever. But it's you're right. The exploding cigar, kapow. That's a good analogy. Thank you. All right. It's your turn. Opti student one. Hello, loves. Will the recreational marijuana bill pass in Florida later this year? Thanks for all that you do. It might not pass this year, but once the governor to Satan is gone, um, and I see a much more governor, a governor coming there much more um middle of the road uh yay so at some point it will be legalized in florida at some point it's going to be legalized in the united states mm -hmm. uh, but i see a little disappointment with it this time around i could be wrong but that's what i'm picking up I'll, I'll be honest with you I think when i look at florida it's like okay if marijuana doesn't pass this time at least go for the abortion <laughs> right. or just go to the place where the planes land to bring in the drugs and you know to the yeah. <laughs> Does Mar-a-Lago Mar -Lago have its own uh, runway? Never mind. <laughs> I'm not touching that. <laughs> Entertainment purposes only. No, but it's got a place where they hide papers. That's right. No shredders, just papers. There was a double meaning in that. Get it paper. I understand. We can't talk about certain things on here. We'll go to jail. YouTube jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can't pronounce this name. I'm not going to try. Americans who owe student loans are mad because the Supreme Court stopped President Biden forgiveness loan plan. Do you see Biden canceling 50K and student loans or get both houses to pass a bill? I see a lot of student loans forgiven and where they were paying these absorb exorbitant interest rates. Like when I went to school, I think I paid 1%. And if I would get a job like something in healthcare or something like that for X amount of time, I only, I only had to pay back a smidgen, and that's what I did. So I see more student loans coming like that, where if you get a job in kind of the area you've studied for mm -hmm. X amount of time, the loan will be forgiven. Um, I do see forgiveness of student loans, and I also see them passing bills where they're going to have to reduce the interest rates, because right now what some of these people are paying for student loans is a juice loan, really. It's, it's well it's also interest upon interest upon interest so it's just it's usury it really is usury um i see it being changed at some point where he, just, he, he just put in another you know another batch where people got you know another umpteen million that people just got their loans taken care of so yeah it's it's going to happen right and i see the court changing as well Clarence mm -hmm. Thomas is going to be off the court. My feeling is before the election. I hope that's why I'm saying October. But still, it's not a majority. It's they it will be five to four. But okay. But oh, here's another question. Oh, go ahead with your question. No, go ahead. Okay, when FDR was president, he raised seventy five percent of taxes on the wealthy. Do you see President Biden doing the same to help improve the economy? Well, the economy is not that bad. Inflation's mm -hmm. a little high, but I mean. 
there's jobs. Uh, the stock market's yeah. doing great. Um, I don't think he's going to raise it to 75%, but I do see. No, he I wants do, to raise it to what it's fair. To what's fair. And at some point I see everybody, no matter what socioeconomic strata they're in, paying their, their fair share. Fair share, right. Yeah. I'm not anti-wealth, trust me. <laughs> but then, but Clinton did the same thing. He raised taxes and, and he left with a, you know, everybody was happy. When Clinton took office, this country had a huge deficit, huge. Mm -hmm. When he left office, there we owed nothing. It was surplus. a zero, it was a surplus and a zero balance. Until w Bush took over. Once W took over, with after the first four years, we were in serious debt. So mm -hmm. maybe they need somebody like uh, William Daly, who was, I think. Clinton's Secretary of Commerce, I forget what his name, what, what his title was, to advise future presidents, Democratic ones, on how to get that zero. Well, I mean, Trump raised the deficit in four years more than it had been in 200 years. So it's like, come on. Well, yeah, the, 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 the mag is talk about, oh, you're spending too much, blah, blah, blah. Oh, really? You let Trump spend more money on wasteful crap than any president in American history. Well, true. They, they can, oh, I know that. So, all right. Um, go ahead. Your turn. Bugaboo. <laughs> I love the name. Aloha. Now that Baron is 18, will he still live with his mom? Are they going to live overseas? I see him living with his mother, but I don't see him living over, living overseas right now. No, neither. He does speak more than one language, but still. He probably speaks Slovenian and probably English. I think he speaks, you know, we'll see. But well, his mother, I think, is from, wait. The Kit Kat Club. I'm sorry? She's from the Kit Kat Club. <laughs> I think she's from the former Yugoslavia, is like Slovenia or Slovenia, something like that. Yeah, Slovenia. Or wait, is it Slovakia? Slovakia is part of the former Yugoslavia, and now it's Czech Republic and Slovakia. I think it's Slovenia. Whatever, but um, I don't see that right away. No, no. no. Even though they have property there. <laughs> okay. Um, your turn. Hi, A and M. <laughs> You guys are amazing. El Salvador president has set a good example of fighting gangs and homicide has dropped to an all-time low. Do you see El Salvador sending military troops to Mexico to fight the cartel and stabilize the country? What do your guides see? My guides tell me that they're not going to send troops into Mexico unless the Mexican president asks them to That's do I agree. I do see a real huge, huge crackdown on the cartels in Mexico. Huge. Um, almost to the point of where it's going to be a civil war, the cartels against the government, and we know who will win the government. Yes. Yeah. I don't see I don't see troops going in unless the Mexican president asks for that, but I don't see that right now. I don't see it either. All right, your turn. Soul Shine 3288. The supermajority Republicans in the Tennessee Senate passed a bill allowing teachers to carry guns in the classroom and lower the age to carry assault weapons to 18. What is the future of Tennessee politics? Will it turn purple or blue? Well, I see Tennessee going purple at some point, but you just wait until one of these students starts shooting people or you know, one of them legally is carrying an AK-47, which I think they should ban. I mean, I believe in people's rights to carry arms, but not assault rifles. Those are meant to kill people. Those aren't meant to go hunt rabbits like that. Correct. So um, it's going to blow up in their faces, unfortunately. And I, I pray that I'm wrong. I really pray that I'm wrong. But um, there's going to be some mass shootings there, and I pray that I'm wrong. You know, you know, I heard people say the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. B.S. 
you cannot use a nine millimeter handgun against somebody who's spraying everything buddy down with an AK-47. Right. You can get a lucky shot, but once they start shooting, I mean, no. it's it's not going to stop them. Uh, you know, they're, they're, once they start shooting with an AK-47, a bunch of people are dead like that. So, I think it was Chris Rock that once said they should charge a hundred dollars for a bullet. Um, I agree. Or ten thousand dollars for a bullet. Yeah, but it's uh, but unfortunately, and I hope I'm wrong with this. I feel that somebody's going to find one of the teachers' guns, and it's downhill from there. I I totally agree with you. All right, Teacher Barbara. Hi, Teacher Barbara. Hey, fellas. Arthur, did Sherry tell you I said hello? I was wondering how you could tell if you were in a karmic relationship or situation, if that exists. I was told my husband was my karmic. I was told my husband was my karmic relationship. I'm riding the struggle bus right now due to our age difference. My my paternal to keep saying told you so. I can't divorce them because I can still tolerate them. Well, that's a good reason not to get divorced. It's just challenging. Advice, suggestions, clarity, anything I'd be grateful for. Well, if it's starting to cause you angst, you know, sometimes staying in something and trying to make it work when it's not working is, li is like trying to drive a car without an engine. But it's a Bentley. Oh, well, it's a Bentley body, but it doesn't have an engine. You ain't getting anywhere. Right. So sometimes knowing when to exit is not a failure. That's a success. I'm not advocating that you divorce your husband. I am saying that, um, you know, some things have just got to let bounce off. And uh, I think um, sometimes people want the emotional response because whether it's, you know, Positive and negative. Whether it's crying or anger or positive, whatever, then they know they've got you. So sometimes the best thing to do is, I'm not saying to be abused, no, but just let it bounce off. Because sometimes if you respond, that just throws fuel to, to the fire. Uh, is it karmic? I, I, you know, the law of karma says karma is fulfilled, but I don't think any karma wants any of us to stay in an unhealthy, abusive relationship. I'm not saying your relationship's abusive, but when it starts to cause you angst and causes you to feel unhealthy, then you have choices. Either stay in it, hope it, stay, it gets better, stay in it and try to tolerate it or leave it. Those are the choices I see, obviously. <laughs> but Well, this reminds me of the guy that's in a doctor's office hitting himself in the head with a hammer. The doctor says, why do you do that? He says, because it feels so good when I stop. <laughs> there you go. I like that. Or so, like, or like well, the what I'm also getting is to tell teacher Barbara is you need to speak to someone, a professional who can give you the tools to deal with this. Correct. Correct. You know, That's very good advice. That's what, I mean, you talk to psychics and we can tell you what we, and karma this, karma that, but we live in this earthy, fleshy world. And sometimes you need to talk to somebody to get the tools to deal with it, to know it's like the battered wife that sits in the situation, but then all of a sudden it's like one day she's, I'm out of here. You know, karma but, doesn't mean that you have to stay in something just because it's karmic. <laughs> well, part of your karma is to learn to get out of it. Knowing when to exit. Or to, set right. or to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. I agree. I would talk to a professional who could give you more. Give you tools is what the word the guys are giving me. The tools. Strategies and tools. Right. Um, remember, those strategies and tools might not change that person, but they might empower you to take your power back. And spirit tells me that teacher, Barb, you will take your power back. And yeah. always remember in order to get someone to change their behavior you change yours first well seriously it's not to change somebody else's behavior it's just no but the way somebody re responds to you or whatever is how you respond it's you change your re the only thing we can respond to the only thing we can react to in this world is how we respond to something right that's the only thing we can control in life really our 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 response you know yeah. your doctor story reminds me to a guy who goes to the doctor he says doctor every time i eat hamburger i get I, every time i eat hamburger i get sick what do i do and the doctor says don't eat hamburger <laughs> so 
you know, Barb, don't eat the hamburger. What, you know, <laughs> that's just, that wasn't psychic advice. That was just, yeah. Don't eat the hamburger. <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you when it's not psychic advice. How's that? <laughs> well, when Mel does not say, well, the light bulb just went off. <laughs> well, that's really super duper psychic advice. <laughs> exactly. Linda Grindle does a side take. Whenever you see her do that side take, it's like my psychic light bulb. She's going, hearing something. Bling. You know? I'm not thinking, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's like you said on attack or something's going yeah. on. Or the, or the, never mind. I won't say that. No, I'm, I'm more like a little kid in the, in the booster seat at Howard Johnson's. Oh, oh, oh. Like sitting on the, it's like sitting on the washing machine, on the washing machine when it's on spin. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. I didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, you didn't have to. Okay, we digress. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. A. <laughs> Laura Wright, A and M. Um, I have had readings with oh, with you both. Y'all amazing. Bless you. Thank you. The Supreme Court will hear arguments in a high stakes case that could invalidate felony obstruction charges. For more than 300 individuals connected to January 6th, including two of Jack Smith's charges against Trump. How will that go? Well, they're in a rock and a hard place, but I don't see those charges being invalidated. I see those charges holding up. Holding? Yes. Okay. I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. Okay, that's fine. I'm I mean, sure. I don't think they're going to do anything that's going to let Trump off the hook other than delay the immunity thing. But they're going to say that he's not immune from prosecution. Oh, yeah. And I have to say, I've been getting some emails recently where people are saying, I know you say Trump's going to not win and all this and Biden gets in, but I, I just keep on feeling that Trump's going to win. I'm like, you're entitled to your opinion, but that's fear-based. Or that's not yeah. what I'm feeling. Maybe they're right, but that's but, not what I'm feeling. That's but right. if you want Trump not to win, vote. I had Simple. someone today that sent me a message. It's like, oh, do we need to move to Canada before the election? I go, um, I'm not. So, no. no. Okay. I don't see that. Okay, Ruby Ann says, hello, Arthur and Mel. Thank you both for what you do for us. I always feel better about the world after I sit down with a cup of tea, with a cup of tea and you two. Oh, that's and nice. And your loved ones always. Thank you. That was so nice. Okay, Would Arthur. You like some Earl Grey with that? I'm sorry? Would you like some Earl Grey with that? There you go. Two sugars, please. Um, do you have more questions? Um, let's see here. Angelic Alchemy, thank you, Dynamic Duo. Could you please look into Israel and the Orange Menace? In October 23, right after the Hamas attack, news agencies reported that the Orange Menace gave Russia secret intelligent re intelligence regarding Israel, which could have been used to help in the planned attack. Will we ever learn the damage that the Orange Menace caused due to him having access to our country's secrets? Thank you. That's a phenomenal question. And the answer to that is yes, it will come out. I think I think Biden and his administration probably know a lot of the collateral damage that Trump did. That's why Biden revoked his uh, uh, Trump's security clearance. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes. Uh, and that will come out. You know, Linda Grindel had said about three or four years ago when Trump was president, longer than that, I'm sorry. She said, um, she told me, she said, I was looking in my, she said, I had a vision or a dream. And in the dream, it said, Trump uh, found guilty of treason. And I was like, I said, Linda, what have you been drinking or smoking? <laughs> uh, and, she's, Give me some. And, and, and she's right. Look what's going on. But I do mm -hmm. see people coming forward that will be credible witnesses. And we'll bring all of that out. I agree. But I don't think the Hamas attack was due to Trump. No, 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 no. That was due to Putin. No, I think Putin and Iran planned that. I, I, I psychically see my guide show me that Putin and Iran planned that because they knew what Netanyahu would do in return, and then 
um, it was done to take the eyes off Ukraine. But then they knew that um, when Israel kept retaliating, it would turn the Palestinians against, you know, Biden mm -hmm. and against Israel. And it was done as a ploy to help Trump politically as well to get into office uh, because they knew it would create all kinds of instability in the Middle East. Um, and that's exactly what's going on. But I still see an exploding it. cigar. Well, exactly. The exploding cigar. That's a very good analogy. That, that's right. Aloha Tuesday, exploding cigar day. There we go. Um, that's really about it. What I have, because there are other things we've, I have questions here about Justice Thomas and all that we've already discussed. Okay. So it's been my pleasure. Uh, here again, a special hello to Jeffrey Stein. Everybody, please send Jeff or Jeffrey healing energy and love. Um, and please give him your support. To support him, I'll tell you what, put it in the comments section below on my channel and on Arthur's channel on the community page in the comments section. You know, Jeff, we're sending you healing energy. I think it'll help him a great deal. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that always does. Because you really, like I said, Jeff, you're not alone. It's a beautiful community here on your side. No one fights alone. And it was, thank goodness, to, you know, the community and my friends and my family and support from my husband, from everybody when I went through cancer. You can feel very lonely because you've got the diagnosis, nobody around you. And it can be a lonely feeling, but it really empowered me to know that I had people that were rooting for me. And, Mel, you can get through this. And I felt... I felt that energy and it really, really, really helped to get me well. So everybody, please put in the comments section that um, that you're sending love and healing energy to Jeff. Yes. Okay. So Arthur, if they want to get a hold of you, once again, how do they do it? They go to my website. At the, oh, I'm no. sorry. I, I get brain dead sometimes. Um, yeah, CRS. Um, www Arthur A R T H U R E S E A S E your Y O U R mind M I N D dot com or here at YouTube at Arthur Ease Your Mind or you can try the phone number at 310-494-5955 and if you call saying I just have a question I may say make an appointment there you, there you go. go all right so um, and you how do we get a hold of you Mr Mel you can call my office at 847-590-5411 or go on my website, www.meldor.com. -E uh, also, if you just go on YouTube and put in Meldor, I'll show up. It says uh, Meldor Intuitive Consultant and Psychic Medium, but uh, I think I'm going to shorten and just say Intuitive Consultant, Aloha Shirt Psychic. Um I think it's yeah the spirit within or something, but um, you can find me on YouTube. Everybody, please go to Arthur's channel, hit the subscribe subscribe button, thumbs up. Down when you're done, below, go to his. Down below on my channel, you'll see a little picture of Lucky, our dog. If you hold your cursor over that, it'll say subscribe. Yeah, uh, and so I just found that out. Oh really? No, I used to have a magic eight ball in mine. There you go. Hello. Next Magic week on Arthur's channel. Mm -hmm. And then everybody stay safe, stay well. Aloha and namaste. And stay amazing. And stay amazing. Aloha and namaste. Until then, bye. Bye-bye.